Welcome to Science Lab with Mrs. Keener. Hi everyone. We'll be doing a space-related lab today. We're going to make a model of the solar system and all you need is paper and pencil and scissors and tape. This is a scale model of the solar system. That means that the sizes have the correct relationship to each other. I'll explain what I mean in just a moment. We're going to make our solar system on a long strip of paper. First, we have to make our long strip of paper. It doesn't matter exactly how big it is, it just needs to be pretty long and skinny. I'm going to show you how to make a long strip of paper using a piece of paper that's uh, an eight and a half by 11 inches. This is standard printer paper. If you want to use a different piece of paper, like from a notebook, or some other kind of paper, scrap paper, whatever, as long as it's approximately this size, it'll be fine. So first, fold your paper in half lengthwise. In origami, sometimes this is called a hot dog fold. And cut the two halves apart so you have two long strips. Then take each one of those long strips, fold it in half lengthwise, and cut along the fold to make your strips even skinnier. Now you have four strips of paper. I started out with a piece of paper that was eight and a half by 11 inches long. Now I have four strips. Each one is still 11 inches long, but they are two and an eighth inch wide, I think. Take your four strips of paper and tape them together end to end. They're going to need to overlap a little bit so they stay together better. You could also staple them or use glue stick, whatever. And overlapping helps them to stick better together. So our final length is not going to be exactly 44 inches. It'll be a little less. That's fine. Okay, now we have our long strip of paper. At one end, write the sun and draw a little picture of it. Use a pencil. I'm going to start out in pencil, and then when I'm happy with it, I'm going to go over it in Sharpie. At the other end, write Pluto. Now, Pluto is no longer considered a planet. It is a dwarf planet because it's so small and it doesn't clear its area of its neighbors. But it's going to be useful in our measurements. So we're going to include it on this strip of paper. It'll help us to figure out where the eight planets go. Take your long, long strip of paper and fold it in half so you have a fold mark halfway between the Sun and Pluto. Put a pencil mark there. This spot, halfway between the Sun and Pluto, is where we're going to put a planet. The planet Uranus, or Uranus, is about halfway between the Sun and Pluto. Next, take the Pluto end and fold it up to Uranus so that there's a line, a fold, halfway between Pluto and the planet Uranus. Put a fold there, halfway in between them. Put a little pencil mark there. We're going to add another planet there. The planet Neptune. Next, it's time for us to add some planets between Uranus and the Sun. So take the Sun end 
and fold the edge so that it meets the line you made for the planet Uranus. Make a fold so we have a fold line halfway between those two things. Put a pencil mark there. This is where the planet Saturn is located. When you draw Saturn, add some rings because Saturn has a lot of little moons and rocks. Next, take the sun end and fold it to your Saturn line. On this halfway point, put a mark. Draw the largest planet there. This is where Jupiter is. We've drawn the four large planets, the four outer planets. Now it's time for the inner planets, the small ones. Take the sun end and fold it to your Jupiter line. And on that line, we're gonna do things a little bit differently for our inner planets. They're not always in the same order. So this just gets a dot, not a whole circle. And we add Mars. Now you might think that Earth is next, but Earth is not halfway between the Sun and Mars, so watch carefully. Fold the Sun end to Mars, make a halfway fold, add a little line. This planet is going to be Venus. Venus is the planet that's halfway between the Sun and Mars. And after this, we don't need to do any more folding. Just estimate halfway between Venus and Mars, add a dot for Earth, and label it Earth. And add a dot between the Sun and Venus and label it Mercury. We've added all eight planets. I want you to add one more thing to make this complete. About halfway between Mars and Jupiter, add some dots, a whole bunch of little dots. Make them as small as you can. Do you know what these dots represent? This represents the asteroid belt. Now you can add some color if you want, or you can say it's done. So we have our four inner planets close together, and then we have our four outer planets, which are spread much wider apart. So this is a model. It's not a perfect representation of the actual solar system. We had to make a few changes in order to make it small enough to fit in our hands. So one way that it differs from the actual solar system is that everything is much smaller. Also, we had to pretend that this was the most incredible once in a lifetime eclipse where all the planets just happened to line up. That doesn't happen very often, but we wanted them to line up so that we could draw them on one piece of paper. Otherwise we would have a huge piece of paper the size of a room. But there are some things about this model that are accurate. We did get the relative sizes right. The four outer planets are much bigger than the four inner planets. And we got the relative distances right. When one is twice as far apart in your model, that's because it's twice as far apart in the real solar system. 
So this is a scale model. That means it doesn't show the actual size, but shows the right relationships between the sizes. If you took the actual solar system and shrunk it down, it would have the right proportions, the right ratios of distances and sizes. If you can think of other ways that this model is or isn't realistic, please let me know when you share in Flipgrid. So take pictures or video of your scale model of the solar system and share them. I look forward to seeing them.